This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 338 of the Dressage Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. Brought to you by Dr. Rose's Remedies, Total Saddle Fit, and listeners like you. Comedian, TV star, and dressage trainer Pam Stone joins us to share some exciting news. And Reese brings us some Thanksgiving recipes for the Total Saddle Fit Tip of the Week. Listen in. This is Reese Koffler Stanfield from Georgetown, Kentucky. And this is Glenn the Geek from Ocala, Florida, and you're listening to the Dressage Radio Show. And this is Philip Parks. I'm in uh, some tropical island someplace on a beach, and I don't care. That's exactly what he's thinking right now. He's going, it's Thursday night. Oh, there's that show thing. But I don't care because I'm drunk on a beach. I hope he and Meredith are for sure. We actually, I can't remember where Philip went. I on thought he said to. like Thailand is someplace in Asia. That's yeah, all I remember. Asia. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, what I did too. Because I, I said, remember. what? Why are you going there? Yeah, I said the same thing. And I'm like, geez. Uh, and then I was like, man, he's gone for like two weeks, Glenn. I know. So. You know, I went, we went out west for 10 days out in the western United States, that is. And I thought that was exotic trip. And he's like, oh, I'm going to like. Philippines. Yeah, I think it's yeah. Philippines. Yeah, we'll have to ask him when he comes back. But Glenn, I can't remember the last time you and I just did a show. I know, but we got we have a fun, fun show planned, and we have a, a really cool guest planned for tonight. So I know I'm excited you're on with me because I'd be a little nervous for her. To say that right <laughs> We've now. had a week here of guests. Let me tell you what. Um, I, you know, we, we are getting ready for the radio. Th- <clears throat> excuse me, the radiothon that's coming up on the thirtieth. That's going to be 12 hours live here on the Horse Radio Network. We're having 20 hosts, and it's going to be Dr. Wendy from the Driving Radio Show and I am seeing all day. And we have tons of guests planned and callers. We want you to call in. We're giving away over $3,000 in prizes now. Wow. And uh, we want the dressage people to be involved. Uh, they're not representing, by the way. Uh, we have not gotten on, one. We have we not have gotten got one to... voicemail oh. from the dressage people. Oh my so God. we need dressage listeners to oh, go to dressageradioshow dot com or horseradionetwork.com dot com and click on the radiothon banner in the middle of the page. You, to, in order to be qualified to win the up to three thousand dollars in unbelievable prizes, you just need to send us a voicemail wishing your friends, family, Reese and Philip, whoever, a a Merry Christmas. Or you can sing a song, or you can do whatever you want. But it can be very simple, just holiday greeting. And you can record it on your phone and email it, or call our voicemail line and do it. But that's all it takes. Yes, do it. Come on, everybody. We cannot lose this. The we great, win. I, you know, it, I'm really disappointed that the Saj people oh. are not coming out for this. So oh, we, we, need, gotta, we need oh, to get represented. We yes, need to get them on, represented. <laughs> and they can call in. The other way you can qualify is they can call in any time during the day, all 12 hours, and uh, just tell us about their favorite holiday horsey memory. Oh, and if they fantastic. do that, they're also qualified. The grand prize at the end of the day is $1,000 worth of stuff. Can, can I call in? You want to because one of the <laughs> things is the Benefab, uh, the Benefab oh, sheet, the, the it's ceramic fantastic. sheet. Oh, my God. That's this worth, thing is great, everybody. That's oh, worth fantastic. 350 bucks. That's one of the prizes. They're, worth every penny. Soar No More is giving away two half gallons of Performance Ultra. That's wow. almost $200. Dublin Lifestyle Boots has given away one of their pairs of boots. Those are the country boots. Wow. Yes, that's okay. almost three hundred dollars, and then weather to freestyle twelve hundred detach neck medium blanket of any size you choose of two hundred and fifty dollars. That's all going to the grand prize winner at the end of the day, and then all day long, including total saddle fit girths, uh, horse and hunk calendars. Oh, um, we have uh, six pairs of Cavallo boots we're giving away all day what? long. This is oh gosh, guys, you've got to call in. This is amazing. Yeah, we have a uh, smooth stride riding jeans. We have all kinds of oh. stuff. I mean, it's just all day long. We're going to be giving away or Zorbean, a, a pack worth a hundred bucks. Wow. Um, there's some really cool stuff, but you need to do one of two things. You need to send us a voicemail ahead of time. 
Get them in by like Thanksgiving or give us a call live that day. Unfortunately, Reese and Philip, Philip's still on our trip, and Reese, you have to teach that day. I so. have class. Yeah, I have, and I so I can't be on. And I'm well. I'm going to come on in the morning. Yeah, um, I think it's going to so be I'll around be ten on. o'clock on uh, on November thirtieth. Yes. So, but I do have that other my other. Th- I'm sure the kids wouldn't mind. Kids, they're they're juniors. She has to be. Per, she has to put her professor hat on. I know. I'm sure they would be very happy if I didn't come, but uh, they have a project due that day, so I really do have to go. You could call in from class and have the kids sing. Oh, you know what? Good. <laughs> That'd totally be fun. Good. They have to. They're in my class. I have to do it. So. You're going to sing on the radio I live. Know. But I'm going to be on in the morning, and I'm super. I'm looking forward to it. And and really, everybody, call in because we have got to represent. We cannot. We cannot be the show that doesn't represent. That's that's bad. So. Well, I, you know, the reason I brought all this up is talk about a week of guests. We got Pam Stone tonight, who was a comedian. She's been on the Tonight Show. She was the basketball coach, the female basketball coach on Coach on the TV show Coach for like seven years. Wow. Uh, she's been on all. She's a stand-up comic. She's been all over the place on TV shows everywhere. And you know, we're having her on tonight, so that should be a lot of fun. But we just interviewed yesterday, and I. I don't know how big he is in the dressage world, but I'm sure everybody knows him, George Morris. Um, yes. George is like the god of horse people. He's still, thing. I mean, yeah, yeah, I don't care what He's discipline you are, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Um, and he never does radio interviews. Well, Jennifer worked seven or nine months to get this book, wow. and we had him on the Horses in the Morning show yesterday. Jamie did an excellent job with the interview. We had him for 20 minutes, and we didn't talk training. We talked about his life. He talked. He was actually on Broadway for two years. No, oh, I did he was not an actor. That. Yeah, years cool. ago, he knows knows all these famous people from from years ago on Broadway. He talked about that. He talked about his early years. It was really a conversation that you never hear him have. Wow, that is super cool. I had no idea. He and talked about his wow. biggest hangup in life, and I, I've never heard that from him. Everybody was shocked, actually. Well. He- yeah, should we tell? We should we tell? No, you have to go is? to horsesinthemorning dot com yeah, and look at Wednesday listen, morning so show. Yeah, <laughs> not what you expect. <laughs> yeah, at all. you really should listen because it's really interesting to hear what it is. So yeah. we won't spoil it. But, but yeah, horsesinthemorning dot com. He starts at about forty five minutes into the show. So take a listen. Uh, that's Wednesday's show. You'll see it on horsesinthemorning.com. And then for, to kick off the Radiothon, we just did this interview last Friday because he couldn't make November 30th when we're doing the 12 Hours Live, but he wanted to be part of it. <laughs> Another get from Jennifer, and that's Charlie Daniels. And we wow. just got done with his interview and then had to do had, had to do George. <laughs> so I was like, oh, geez. But they were both delightful. I, That's I will awesome. Say that. I believe it. I believe that yeah, for Charlie sure. Charlie was great. great. So oh, all of that. that? Yeah. I know. Lots of excitement here at the Horse Radio Network. This and is tonight, so Reese fun. is going to do, it for a training tip, what better to do the weekend or the week before Thanksgiving than a tip on recipes for Thanksgiving Day? Because who cares about riding next week? Everybody's <laughs> thinking about eating. I don't know. I, I love to ride on Thanksgiving. My sister yeah. comes over. Yeah, my sister comes over and we ride a little bit. I mean, I can't say there's any serious training going on, but uh, we do ride a little bit and it's so fun. And uh, this is actually how I got started on horses and uh, the Horse Radio Network was recipes from Reese. That's right. So, that is true. <laughs> yeah, I started because I happened to mention in one of my interviews, I, I enjoy cooking. So uh, Glenn Snack. I latched onto that. <laughs> yeah, I latched right away. And we had some funny we had some funny things so that's how i started here at the horse radio network before um we took over the dressage radio show so that's hopefully true. i'm a little rusty but i think I, I think i got it for this week well why don't we go to our first guest i gotta tell you a little bit about her her name is pam stone she has uh, stones throw farm dressage and that is in the Blue Ridge Mountains near Landrum, South Carolina. She's an owner and a trainer, and she's pretty much been focusing on dressage since 1991. Before that, she was a celebrity. She was a stand-up comic. She has uh, performed at the White House. Uh, Tonight Show with Jay Leno, Oprah Winfrey, Joan Rivers. Uh, she's done many comedy specials and Showtime. She was uh, Showtime. She's won uh, awards for her comedy. She's had a she's had a, a show of her own called the Pam Sto- Stone Show. Uh, she, she's also a radio person, a radio host. She actually won a Gracie Award for the best comedy entertainment program, and the Gracie Award are like the Oscars for radio people. Something, by the way, Reese, that we'll never see. 
Uh, so I, we're not never going to see that, but she did, <laughs> <laughs> and been on many TV shows, including most popular Coach, which she has done for, which she did for seven seasons as the female basketball coach that was always arguing with Coach, uh, and she played Judy Watkins on that. So she has all of that coming up. But I found on YouTube some of her stand-up comedy from 1990 when she was doing a military function or a military show. Do you want to hear a little bit of it? Oh. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, let's take a listen. You ever wonder if Johnny and Mr. Red are the same people? I think so. <laughs> Wilbur. I have no idea. Cool to be here. I did, you know, I did a tour overseas for naval bases. I went to some countries I've never been to before. I went to Germany. I don't know if you guys have ever been over there. This is the You'll stupidest country. You'll appreciate this. This is a country where they serve you beer in liter-sized mugs and encourage you to drive as fast as possible. <laughs> There weren't any speed limits in this country. I'm on the on ramp to the auto bomb going, please, Jesus, just help me merge. Just help me merge. <laughs> I'm driving some little rabbit golf. Real good idea to drive a car over there. You can bench press, right? I take off. I'm doing 90 in the slow lane. Ah! A Schwinn passes me at 180. <laughs> <laughs> Get pulled over by the German police. Freulein, can you walk a straight line? Uh, yes, sir, I think I can. Ah, then you need more beer? <laughs> I guess it makes sense. You pour a liter of beer in your bladder, you'll be driving that fast just to find a bathroom, man. You're getting out of the way! That's right. But it's good to be here. I recently just turned 30, so I've been thinking about death a lot. So it's, uh... I, I think about it all the time. It scares the hell out of me because I was watching Geraldo the other day. They had these people on that claimed that they died and come back to life. You heard these people? They all said the same thing. It could be true. They're like, well, first I felt like I was floating out of my body. And then I felt like I was flying around the room. And then I was instinctively drawn towards this bright white light. You know, which apparently means when we die, we turn into moths. <laughs> well, here you are, you're living a good life. You think you're going to heaven. Now you'll be bopping your head against a porch light for eternity. <laughs> oh, what's up? Get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, anybody that is is horse shopped or been to Germany for anything would yeah, so appreciates that. I figured. I figured. Well, let's talk to Pam Stone <laughs> right after this word from Doctor Rose's Remedies. Dr. Rose's Remedies Skin Treatment Salve and Spray are 100% all-natural products. They are anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antiviral, and antifungal. Dr. Rose's are made with all human-grade ingredients and are safe and effective for treatment for all manner of cuts and scrapes on your horse. And Dr. Rose's is the must-have product here at the Horse Radio Network headquarters to keep PT Scooter's delicate white pasterns free from dew poisoning and scratches. Ask for Dr. Rose's at your local tax store or feed supplier or visit them online at drrosesremedies.com. That's drrosesremedies.com. Well, hi, Pam. I am so excited to have you on the show tonight. I'm excited to have you to talk about comedy and TV and all of that. Reese is excited to talk to you about dressage. So, <laughs> I mean, this should get me better. I, get, I mean, how much better does this get? I know. But, but all your listeners are just... Horses. That's right. Horses and showbiz. That's right. It's so well, true. I have to tell you, I have seen at least twice every episode of Coach uh, from years ago. My wife and I, we have fond memories of sitting. Matter of fact, she was so excited when I told her that we were going to be talking to you. And we're yeah. going to talk about Coach a little bit later, but you had a okay. whole stand-up career. And I have to say this right off the top, and you can write letters sure. to Glenn at horseradionetwork.com. But um, dressage and stand-up comic usually do not go together. Okay, so I have, I, uh, Reese, you're going to so dig this. In fact, you're going to worship at the altar of Auntie Pammy after I say yes. this. <laughs> I have the distinction, I have the distinction of being the first stand-up slash actor who ever said the word dressage on The Tonight Show. Oh, is that right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, now it was after Johnny. It was when Jay took it over. And so the first time I did The Tonight Show, he was asking me what dressage was, and I was, I was telling him about it. And, you know, and the thing is, this is such a great show to do, you guys, because, and then you guys, I'm not talking about the diet show, I'm talking about you guys, because no one has ever believed me. The only people that believe the story are other horse people. I never had a burning desire to be a stand-up. I never had a burning desire to be an actor. The only reason I did it was to make money 
to be able to train and buy horses and <laughs> compete at the caliber I wanted. And the deal was, is I was teaching riding in Georgia. I was living in Georgia. I was putting myself through college, and I was waitressing at a comedy club at night. And the reason I worked at that comedy club is it was a four-hour shift. You clocked in at 7, you clocked out at midnight, and you could make like 50 to 100 bucks a night. And this now we're going back to the mid-'80s, okay, early-'80s. Well, that was and, good money because everybody got drunk, and they would tip you at a comedy club. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> Everybody's laughing, and so and so in this club, it was the Punchline in Atlanta, which was the premier, one of the hottest clubs in the nation, with only the top top headliners. Okay, so if it was a dressage show, let's just say this: if it was a dressage show, it would be a CDI. You'd only see the top people going through. So I'm so here I am, this waitress, you know, and I'm in my early twenties, and and I'm leaning against the back of the club, and I'm watching Seinfeld on stage, and I'm watching Leno on stage, and I'm watching Paul Reiser and Dennis Miller and and uh, Ellen DeGeneres and everybody. Um, and I'm leaning back there with my train thinking, this just doesn't look this hard. And I know how much <laughs> they got paid because I would, at the end of the night, when we count out our, our you know, the money that we had, yeah, I you know, we knew the managers and stuff, and I knew how much these people were making. And I thought, you know what? If I came up with like 15 to 20 minutes of material, um, I could be like an opening act because they got paid like 300 bucks a week plus, you know, accommodations and gas money. And I thought that would be a really nice little supplemental income, you know, for, you know, for board and all that kind of stuff. And then the next thing I knew, I mean, it just, it was crazy. As soon as I went up on open mic night, the first time I was ever on stage, I killed. And I've always said if I bombed, I never would have done it again. I would have been too freaked out. But it was like it was like God said, okay, National Velvet, I've been listening to your dreams <laughs> since you were a little girl. And I'm going to give you what you've been wanting, but I'm going to take you on this weird road to get there, you know. <laughs> and the next thing I knew, I was like touring with Jay Leno. And then the next thing I knew, I was in California and every dollar I was making, I was stocking away. And then when I moved to California, like a year later, um, you know, and I was able to bring my horse out a year after that. And then just like four years later, I landed coach, which was a complete fluke that I landed that. And so I was able then I was able to train with Marie Myers, who was on, who rolled out road in the uh like the 19, what was it, 90 Stockholm uh, WEG, you know, the games, and then Jan Ebling for a total of like nine years in full training on on two horses, five lessons a week, and then competing in Del Mar and the LA Equestrian Center and all that stuff. So, you know, when people say, oh, wouldn't you want to do a sitcom again? It's like, no. I mean, I just <laughs> shot the pilot for a coach when they want to bring it back. But the whole reason, the whole reason I got into it in the first place was to make money because I'm poor. I'm not a trust fund baby. I don't have a rich daddy. I don't have a rich husband. And it was going to be up to me to to make, you know, those few thousand, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to buy like a decent competitive warm blood. That's and funny. That's why I did it. Well, well, I have there to you ask go. you, you know, you talk about Leno, you talk about Jay, and I'm what, we love yep. his new show about the garage and his cars, his love of his life, yeah. his cars. Was Len- right. I mean, he just seems like a nice guy. You toured with him. Is he a nice guy? He's great. Yeah. I mean, Jay really, there's stories I, I, that I really can't tell. Right, I bet. I say, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's a dirt that I can't tell. But he's always, I will say this, because that makes it sound like, you know, we were fooling around or something, that, which, of course, never happened. He is absolutely monogamous. He's an incredible guy. Uh, and he really took me under my wing because I was just starting out. And he would watch me. He would be in, this, all right, this is how far back this goes. Okay, you ready for this? All right, so he and I worked together for three weeks, like in Augusta, Georgia, and where else were we? Charleston, South Carolina, and I can't remember the third gig. But it was he was working for The Door. Now, this was before he had The Tonight Show. This was when he had done about 25 appearances on Dave Letterman, and people loved when Jay would come on Letterman. And uh, he was really building, and he was like the best headliner in the country. Um, so... He, at this point, he was a big enough draw that he would only come into clubs and work for, like, the door. And then the club would make money by food and drink they would sell. He made me stand by the door and count every person that came in, right? So to make sure he wasn't getting ripped off by the club owner. <laughs> so he oh, would my say, gosh. He'd say, he'd say, all right, kid, you stand here and you count everybody that comes in. I'm like, okay, Mr. Leto. You, know, like, <laughs> you, were, you were Jay's like, okay, accountant. <laughs> So he would watch my set, 
I would do my little 20 minutes in front of him, which was essentially tall, skinny jokes. That's all I did was because I'm so tall and so skinny. And, you know, and he would critique me at the end of every show, you know, because we were working for a week at a time together. And he'd, and I always remember him saying this, and it always helped my career hugely. He said, he said, you got to trim the fat out of your act. He said, you got, he said, you got to get to the punchline faster. By the time you get to the punchline, the people don't even care. And he said, you know, in my act, if I don't have a major laugh every seven seconds, I've got holes in my act. And I was like, Oh, all right. Okay. Wow. Gotcha. So, um, so at the end of the night, he would say he would have the money from the door and he would say, how many people did you count? And I was like, Oh, 150 people. And, uh, and he's, and he's getting paid cash every night. And I would walk in and he's counting the cash and he was so excited how much money he was making, which was like nothing back there. And he, he'd be sitting, he's sitting at the desk and he's counting out these fives and tens. And he's like, 1500 bucks. I just made 1500 bucks. Can you believe that? In one show, one night, he, he's like, I used to be a mechanic. I can't believe I'm making this kind of money. And then and these kind of memories for me are so sweet of what someone like him thought 1500 Well, I mean, to any of us, making 1500 bucks standing on stage for an hour? Yeah. You know, yeah, that's not, not bad. bad. Yeah, that's still not, not bad. bad. No. Saying, oh, new saddle. You know. Yeah. <laughs> right? You know? So, uh, so that was, that was superb. You know, he really always kind of took me under his wing. And then when I got coached, I got coached and he got the tonight show like three weeks later and he had a book out and he was at a bookstore in Los Angeles signing copies. And, uh, my husband and I were walking down the sidewalk. We were going to go get something to eat that night. And he came out of the bookstore right when we were coming out and he pointed at me, he goes, Hey, I saw you on coach. He said, and he actually said this, have your people call my people. I want you on. I want you on like next week. I was like, cool. Okay. So, and then I was, and, and how nerve wracking was the tonight show the first time? You know, it wasn't because I got to go on as a seated guest. You know, the comic is, you know, you do your stand up in the days of Johnny Carson, you do your stand up and then you'd nervously glance at Johnny. And if he thought you were incredible, he would beckon you over and you'd get to sit and talk with Johnny. But generally they just disappeared back through the curtain. So when I went on with Jay the first time, um, I went on as a seated guest and then we talked about horses and stuff. Wow. Which was great. Well, yeah, now, now, cool I yeah, that's really cool, and I don't want to get away from Coach though because I have I know I know it was a job for you to get horse stuff, but for my yeah. wife and I, we love that show. So now Craig T. Nelson, and now yeah. they're, you you actually went back and did a pilot. They they are doing a limited series to see <laughs> if you're going to end yeah. up working for another ten years. No, I mean, you know, here's the weird thing. So so I run my own barn, okay? So, so By the way, for those that are... aren't sure who we're talking about here, you were the, the you, you said it earlier, the tall, skinny basketball coach that was always the antagonist against uh, Coach right. Hayden Fox, right? <laughs> right. I was Judy Watkins. That's yep. the name of my character, and I was, uh, and I was Dauber's girlfriend. Yeah, that's right, yeah, Dauber's girlfriend. Exactly I forgot I'm a Dauber. <laughs> That's right. So I know. Y'all know it was it was great. So, you know, I live now in upstate South Carolina, really close to the new fabulous Trionic International Equestrian Center. So oh yeah. Seen that awesome. Yet? Yeah. Yep. So you well, live I in the mountains. I've not been to Tryon. Yep. Yeah, I've not been there yet. Asheville. Reese, Reese, when you come, baby, you call me and I will show you around. I mean it, it is I you know, I'm gonna get back to coach in five seconds, but I have to tell you to, to be able to live here and know now that we don't have to go to Florida compete, you know, yes. we don't have to spend tens of thousands and holler ass down there and our horses and that, that we have this place like 30 minutes away from where I am. And I'm like very close to the border of North Carolina. It is the most amazing facility ever. And I actually, they had me come in for the show jumper series, the end of the show jumper series, um, to do color commentary. In the audience. Oh, how so fun. I'm, I'm walking around with a, like a microphone and they, I have a cameraman. So, you know, you have like six or seven rounds with the horses and then they drag the ring. And during that time when they're dragging the ring, they have this giant jumbotron up there. And so I would just like walk up. I was like Oprah, like walking up to people. <laughs> <in the audience. laughs> That's so cool. But, it is so crazy. You go there for a horse show. They have, you know how you go to horse shows and the food sucks. You know, you're, you're eating some greasy hamburger yeah. and, and yes. yeah. throw it right before you clap. They have, are you ready for this? They have a sushi restaurant. They have 
um, like fine dining there. They have legends. They have coffee shops. They have incredible tax shops and gift shops. I mean, it is like Disneyland for horse people. It is crazy. Awesome. It is so cool. That's so awesome. anyway, so, so you are so right. So after coach, so I'm, I'm setting this up by saying, you know, I, I um, live in this small town. I live in Landrum, South Carolina, and I run my own barn. And it's a small, I only have five stalls and I have, you know, like two or three horses in training at a time and students. And, um, you know, and when you don't have staff, you can't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, we know that story. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we're all like, mm-hmm. yep, we know. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, every morning, Auntie Pam is in that barn, you know, at 6 30, 7 a.m., just like everybody else, like mucking out stalls, turning horses out, grooming, feeding, and then getting ready for the first lesson and blah, blah, blah. And because I train and I and train and teach. And so, you know, so I'm out there just cleaning my stalls. And later that evening, uh, I'm watching TV with my husband in my underwear, as you do, you know, at the end of the day with your beer. And I get a phone call and it's from my agent in California. It is so long since I've talked to my agent that I don't even <laughs> recognize the number. I don't even <laughs> recognize the number. I look at my cell phone. I look at my cell phone. I'm like, oh, somebody's calling from California. I wonder who that is. And it's my agent, and she said, well, guess what? And I said, what? And she said, NBC wants Coach to come back. And I went, what? No, they don't. <laughs> she said, they're, you know, she said, you know how Full House has come back and the X-Files, they're bringing Coach back, and they want you. And I said, get out of here. They <laughs> don't want Get out of here. And so she said, yep, they do want you. And so... So I go from like in the stall, you know, bucking out <laughs> to like, you know, I pick up my, my, uh, I go to the airport, I fly out there. It's like, it, it is so crazy. It's like first class air, fly back out there, get there, Miss Stone limo, the whole thing. It's like, uh-huh. it's so bizarre. <laughs> Did you at least going. change your shoes before you got in the no, limo? I, I'm just asking. I, you know what I did? You're going to laugh so hard. I can't be bothered to, like, um, separate whites and colors when I do wash. So all my underwear is gray. All my bras are gray. All my underwear is gray. <laughs> Too much information. But whole people were just, at the end of the day. Yeah, we get it. So <laughs> yeah, we, you know, we get you it. come in the house and are like, I just freaking can't be bothered. I just want a clean bra to go to ride in tomorrow. And so the first thing I thought of was, like, I got to go get new underwear because I remember <laughs> when you do a sitcom – you know, you have to do wardrobe every day. You go for fittings because they're trying to figure out what to dress your character in for the different scenes that you're in. Like if you're in a scene where you're going out to dinner, you got to try on all these clothes. And so the wardrobe girls, you know, they just see you stand in your underwear. And I'm like, they can't see me in this underwear. <laughs> so, you know, so, so I bought all new underwear. The glamorous <laughs> life of a TV star. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? It, was, it was great, you know. I mean, seeing Craig T. Nelson again and seeing um, Billy Fagerbecki, who plays Dauber, and he's also the voice of uh, Patrick on, Sp- on SpongeBob. It was the most. Oh, you know who's going to. It must have been hard, though. To, you had to miss Jerry Van Dyke. Uh, well, yeah, but you know what? I mean, Jerry, uh, I, I think Jerry probably would have done guest spots on it, but, you know, he's in his 80s now. So yeah. he's kind of he's kind of yeah. slowing down his career. And um, it was just to see Craig and, and Billy again after 17 years. And, and one of the scenes they had, it started out in um, Hayden's. Cabin, Glenn. Oh, really? But, you know the old log. Yeah, 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 so yeah. It was, they had, they still had the set. They never throw those sets away. So they had the set, and we're just walking. We're walking in the cabin, like picking up props. We're like, oh my god, I remember that. I can't believe this. And it was just, we were crying. <laughs> and it was so surreal. So met up with old comedy friends of mine, doing sushi every night. You know, living a life, Ubering here and there, and then and, and it's also cool. So then, so then, after that, so I fly home, and then I had to turn around and fly to Philadelphia because I still do corporate stand-up dates. And I was working with Mary Wilson from the Supremes, and we were doing a, a big convention thing, and we were co-headlining. And we were talking, we had, we went out for dinner and I'm thinking, I can't believe I'm having dinner with this woman. This is like crazy. (laughs) And, and she's talking about, you know, how she grew up in the projects and, and and Diana Ross, they all came from the projects and how they all um, started the Supremes. And isn't it wild? The, the, 
the travels that God takes you in your life, you know, and, and I said, yeah, and I said, man, I was just cleaning my horse stalls and doing my horse thing. And then they called me back to coach and it's like crazy. And then after dinner, I'm like, no, 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 no. I go back to my hotel room and I think, oh, I should check messages. And it's the executive producer of Coach Barry Kemp. And he leaves the best that she's like, Pam, we're all just gutted. NBC decided they're going to pull the pilot. They're not oh, going to air no. it until the third episode oh. they ordered. <laughs> So, wah, wah. so I fly back home and, you know, the next morning I'd like cleaning stalls again. I'm like, yes. this happened to me. I was like, Whoa. did this just happen? So did wow. they pull it? It's not going to happen? I, it's not going to happen. They just, they paid for 13 episodes. They wrote a check for, you know, I mean, we all got paid for the pilot. Only Craig and the executive producers got paid the millions for the 13 episodes. But it was like, I, I was oh. really grateful for it because I thought, Ooh, ooh, new I'm board. so and then, bummed. Like, heating and air went out, so I yeah. cannot get like, a new HVAC system. So oh. no new horse for Pam. Oh, <laughs> I'm so bummed about that. I really am. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, yeah. We're all like, oh, we, we wanted a I girl. Know. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> NBC. I hate NBC. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Yeah, you're like, ah. Oh. You God. and you and let a few other you, you so, and a few other comedians. <laughs> so. Let me tell you what I was doing, and Reese, you'll laugh so hard at this. So during during the the day on the set of Coach, like because I only had one scene in the pilot, but it was a really pivotal and really funny scene where Craig and I just go at it. And so so I still had to be on the set at like nine thirty every morning till five, and you just kind of sit around and wait for your scene. So what was I doing? Because I'm like I'm in the money. I have no, I'm looking for horses. You were looking so for everything. Horses. I have my iPad and I'm on your own yourself <laughs> looking at horse market. Of course you are. I do that anyway. I'm like sitting in the airport. I'm like, oh yeah, or like you know, do whatever. You're like, oh, let's look at let's, let's look what horses we can have. Oh, that's so I know. funny. I, no, so so I'm back to to where I was, uh, you know, with my uh, OTTB, and um, for right now, you know, this is the first third run I've had. It's, a, it's Something I'm doing for dressage today, and uh, Steuben, which uh, sponsors me, it, which I'm very grateful for, because man, those thoroughbreds are the fastest spooks on the planet. Mm-hmm. Yes, they yeah. are. Yes, and they I are. Being from Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Holy cow! I mean, I'd, I'd ridden a lot of thoroughbreds like growing up when I did hunters in my teens and stuff, but they were all basically they were all seasoned campaigner hunter jumpers and stuff, but. This guy that I have now, and it was a project that uh, I write a blog for Dressage Today magazine called uh, Remember to Smile. And I said, you know what? I said, damn it, this sport's getting so expensive. Uh, you know, so many, the average adult amateur in Dressage is a 42 year old uh, married woman. And I said, it's, it's, unless you're a trust fund baby, you just don't even feel welcome in the sport. It's just so expensive yeah, um, to ride true. competitively. And I approached the editor of Dressage Today because I've been writing for them for years. And I said, let's do a project, damn it. I said, give me, give me a year, and I bet I can find a competitive, a competitive dressage prospect for a grand. And I'll have a year to train him and then show him. And I got this incredible three, he, had, he was just at the end of a three-year-old year. Uh, from Rerun Racehorse Rescue, and uh, big uphill thoroughbred, and I love him to death. He's super, but man, he is the fastest spook I've ever ridden, and I've got to send you guys the video. It's like nine seconds, where it is so fast, <laughs> it is like, there's no warning. They, there's no, yeah. there's no, there's no, there's no tension in the back, there's no stiffness in the neck, you just come out of the corner, and suddenly you're 100 feet the other direction. We have a name for those in the driving world. I'm a driver, and I have a hackney pony that bolts. Um, and, oh, God. And it's oh, at, my God. Yeah, and you know, you're in the cart, and all of a sudden he's oh, gone, and, and you're going down the road oh, on the wrong God. side. Uh, but he, we call them baby bolts. So we call them BBs. Uh, they're baby bolts. <laughs> We've gotten from very large bolts now to baby bolts. At least now I can get them under control in about 100 feet. So, yeah. That has to be the scariest thing in a cart ever. When you're, you know, it's, it's, it's scary if you're in a field, it's really scary if you're on the road. The first time he did this, I had driven him for quite a while and he had never bolted before, but he, the rustling noises in the woods, like there's horses coming through the woods. He just, 
loses his cookies. That's scary, yeah. So he he uh, took off into the other side of the road, and thank God oh. there was nobody coming because it would have been bad. <laughs> it would have been bad. Holy moly! And the internet, like the fly nets, don't help him. Well, we're get, we're like, we're now experimenting actually with uh, with with. Uh, with noise suppression <laughs> systems, yes. Sir. Noise suppression. Yeah. <laughs> We're experimenting, but yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's well, Pam, so freaking fast. Yeah, and we were just talking off air. You know, when I went to the uh, Thoroughbred Makeover Project, it was essentially <laughs> a comedy show. It really was. Oh it, it was a. Oh, yeah. I mean, the material you could have gotten in that, you know, three days <laughs> for a comedy show. I mean, really, it was kind of that way. And, and I, I don't know about I'm sure everyone else feels um, like this who owns a barn or, or it has a group. You know, really, sometimes things happen at the time. They're not funny. But we all have those right. stories of looking back. And I was thinking I was like, you know, on some level, we're all kind of comedians because um, yeah. Yeah. there's some silly, like silly, silly stuff that happens in barns. And, you know, like, you know, somebody falls off and here at the farm, you know, of course we make sure they're okay and, and whatever, but then it's relived. It becomes this huge story and we always oh, yeah. have champagne, you know? So it's like, becomes even more comedic as this is going There's on. There's nothing funnier. There's really nothing funnier than watching somebody fall off. As soon as you know they're okay. There's, there's nothing there's really, it's, it's just the best comedy that there is. I mean, it, yeah, I, I hear you. And, you know, and I've had warm blood forever. I've always had death horses. And, you know, when they when they spook, it's like slow motion. It's like reverb. It's like, whoa. <laughs> you know, it's just, they just kind of come around like a big ring on a freeway. And these, these thoroughbreds, I'm going to send you the clip. It's so funny. And... You know, I'm not trying to do like a shameless plug of Steven, but had I not been in that Steven Genesis dressage battle, I, 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 that sucker just, man, I think that's the only way I was able to stay on. <laughs> well, yeah. we love Steven, by the way, so you're good. You're, you're good with that. Also, well, and you know, someone sent me a study that um, said that someone was wearing a GPS thing in their pocket when their horse spooked on the side of the road and it recorded oh. the speed of the horse's spook to be 54 miles an hour. And the that. point yeah. of the, 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 yeah, the point of the study was, so when you drive past a horse on the road, just keep in mind that's how fast that they can spook and pop out in front of your car. And when Forrest, my horse's name is Forrest, when he spooks like that, it's, all I see in front of my face is a blur. I mean, it is, it's gotta be, it's gotta be 55, 60 miles an hour. <laughs> yes. And that is fast. <laughs> well, Pam, we, well, I hate to say this, but we're plain running out of time already. Will you come back sometime? I would love to come back. Let's do it ah. again. All right. Let's do it Deal. again. All right. Fantastic. We're going to do it again right after they call you back about coach uh, and oh, they pick it oh, up and yes. then you've gone overseas and bought your new fancy horse. How cool. <laughs> so cool. I would help you I shop. <laughs> Pam, I'm telling you, I am the best. I think horse shopping is the best. It's horses and shopping combined. Yeah. I'm good at yeah. it. I'll go with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm right with you too. And you know what? I'm a devotee of Carl Hester's and I truly believe what Carl says. It's a mug game when you start writing those thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar checks. All of us. I mean, he paid five thousand euros for Vallegro. You know, he ne he buys all his horses as two year old. He never spends more than like five grand in uh, euros, and it's just it it's training. It is so. But I do want to invite everybody to my Facebook page, which is Stone Throw Farm Dressage, because I always do put up um, funny like uh, videos and stuff and cool articles and stuff. So keep up with me there. Do you miss uh, one well, one last question, and we'll put the link yeah. to that on our Facebook page and also our show notes for today's show. Do you miss sure. uh, Do you miss stand up? I know I miss. You know I owned an acting company for ten years. We did kind of a Benny Hill yeah. version of a medieval feast, and I I played well, a king. <laughs> yeah, I played a king for four hundred fifty shows, and I got to tell you, Pam, I kind of miss people what? bowing to me. <laughs> uh, I, well, there's no reason they should stop. There's I no know. I still do stand up and I do corporate I do corporate stand up. I can't do the clubs anymore. I just can't take it. But I do I do corporate stuff like the one that I just did with Mary Wilson and stuff like that. And I you know, so um uh, I mean that's one thing that I love doing with the Triana Equestrian Center up here. And so, you know, holler, Wellington, holler when you're there doing you your, go. <laughs> your, your, your diamonds and what is it, your diamonds and demons? 
fundraiser and stuff, you're not going to get a better stand up because I incorporate stand, I can incorporate horse stuff in it. Yeah, that, so, that's um, perfect. Well, I'm you know what? I got, a, I got a horse shop. We have a lot of <laughs> listeners. We have a lot of listeners. Thanks, Pam. We appreciate it. <laughs> you're so welcome. Have a great, great night, guys. Thanks, Pam. This tip brought to you by Total Saddle Fit, the shoulder relief girth that Reese and Philip both love. And here's why. The saddle fit solution you have been waiting for is finally here. TotalSaddleFit.com is proud to introduce the shoulder relief girth. This strategically shaped girth actually moves the girth line of your saddle back over one inch, thereby freeing your horse's shoulders from the saddle. Traditional girths pull saddles up against a horse's shoulders and often over the top of the shoulders. The shoulder relief girth's recessed ends allow for the billets to buckle into the girth farther back to give your horse unparalleled freedom of motion. We are so certain that your saddle will fit better and your horse will be more comfortable that for a limited time we are offering a 30-day, 110% money-back guarantee. If you are not totally satisfied with your shoulder relief girth, send it back for a full refund plus 10% of the purchase price. Don't wait. Order now for the best saddle fit solution available. At TotalSaddleFit.com. Visit TotalSaddleFit.com. Well, the tip of the week this week has nothing to do with dressage and everything to do with our bellies. (laughs) Yes. High five. <laughs> I'm ready for this week. I don't know. This is like my, I love Thanksgiving, actually. It's my favorite holiday and a little bit of time to sit down and sit with your family and, you know, think about all the things to be thankful for, for sure. So, um, so actually, Glenn, I, I had to call my mom on this one um, because my favorite, I mean, really, we love the turkey and Travis has started frying a turkey. Oh, yeah, I do that oh, too. Oh, my God. It's so good. But I was very concerned the first time it happened. And I made him do it like in the driveway, like as far from the barn and you know, the that shop. was so and... wise move. Let me tell you yeah. why. Yeah. <laughs> because I almost burnt down the house with it the one year. I, I could believe it. But oh, we, yeah. we were doing it, my brother in law's. We were in the garage, right? Oh, yeah. Connected to the house because oh, it was snowing. So we were doing it in the garage. <laughs> and what happened was I got the oil up to the 350, like you're supposed to. And you have the therm- big long thermometer in the oil and it tells you what the temperature is. It was perfect. So then I get the turkey and plunk that in and I put the thermometer back in. And about oh, a half no. an hour later, we come <gasps> out and the entire garage is filled with smoke. Oh. And I go over and we're like, what the hell is happening? We pull the turkey out. And of course, it is like burning. And <laughs> we discovered that the thermometer, which still said 350, was stuck into the turkey. Oh. When we put the thermometer back in, when we put it back in to see what the actual oil temperature was, it was 525 and it combusts into flames at 540. We were 15, <gasps> 20 degrees away from burning the house down. So, yes, be careful. Oh, my God. (laughs) Be careful. We saved the turkey, by the way. Oh, (laughs) yeah. So I was definitely... Did you really? How did that... How was that possible? (laughs) It was really crispy, good skin on the outside. I I can tell you that. There's my piece of advice. Do not stick the thermometer in the middle of the turkey. That's not... Yeah, no, not the idea. The cold turkey. Yeah, not the idea. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah. So we we do a turkey and my mom does just a beautiful spread. I actually... I do the pumpkin pie, uh, which is my contribution to... Because usually I'm feeding horses and trying to get organized. So the pumpkin pie... I do it and then I can take it, do it on Wednesday night and take it over. So, but that was not what I called my mom for because, you know, pumpkin pie is relatively easy, or at least I just do the recipe on the box. I mean, not on the the can. can. Yeah, that's what we do. (laughs) It is great. So I'm like, throw some condensed milk, a little bit of sugar, and you got a pie. And you're good to go. And some, you know, some pumpkin pie spice. So, and I even tried to make my crust, and that's good. But to be honest, I didn't think it was that much better than that. No, we we always buy it too. It's like, all right. (laughs) Yeah. So I, I, you know, make the mix and put it in. But uh, my favorite actually is my mom makes these colonial Thanksgiving yams, and they're awesome. So I didn't huh. know how to make them, actually. I had to, Do you I had have to find, like, 300-year-old ha- yams? Oh, 300-year-old yams. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Don't just cut the mold off. You're totally good. Okay, good. <laughs> so, okay. So you start with, this is what you need. You need one 8 by 8 casserole dish. You need six large yams peeled 
or for me because I like to double the recipe because I love it so much. My mom, I think she does more than, I think she doubles the recipe. And then a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, a half a cup of honey, and I prefer local honey. I really, we have good local honey here. And then you need the juice and zest of one orange. And this is where it gets good. One stick of butter. Mm. So it's a Paula Deen recipe. <laughs> basically, Paula Deen. I didn't say this was a healthy Thanksgiving recipe. No, uh, yeah. And but really, honestly, I just let it rip on Thanksgiving and, and just, you know, that's yeah, why I don't why mind. Not? Actually, yeah, I don't mind doing the barn on Thanksgiving because I feel like if I at least do stalls and ride some horses, then it, it, it equals out. Not really, but you know where I'm going with this. So, preheat the oven to 350. Spray the casserole dish with non stick spray. That's actually an important step. If you forget that once, you will never forget it again. Um, so then you're going to boil the peeled yams until they're tender, fork tender. You're going to drain um, the yams and place them in a large mixing bowl. You're going to mash until they're smooth. Then you're going to fold in the other ingredients, the nutmeg, the cinnamon, the honey, the, lime, um, the zest of the orange, the orange juice, and the butter. And then you can plate the mixture um, in the casserole. You can, you can either plate uh, – in, in there, and, and my mom bakes it for 45 minutes for 350 at 350. And then my mom is so cute on the on the note. She said, "If the farrier arrives at an inconvenient time, or you have an emergency in the barn, you can you need you can go outside. You can use canned yams, and it turns out just as well." Huh. <laughs> was the, that Who would was have the, thought? Yeah, my mom made <laughs> made this note on the recipe, so she, uh, she so yeah. If you need, that's candy, a horse mom. You know, that's a horse mom right done there. This before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I had no idea um, that she she had done that before. So uh, that is my personal favorite. Um, you could also, if you really wanted to, you could use uh, a mixer uh, to mix everything together and make it really smooth. The other thing that I'm just gonna throw out there that I think would be very good is a little bit of bourbon in the yams. Oh, yeah, that would be good, actually. I'm just saying. It's going to actually provide a little bit of sweetness to it. Yeah, Yeah. I think it would be delicious. Just toss a little. So that was the only thing that I'm going to see if I can can update this this year and put a little bourbon in there. And I think. I think you you live in Kentucky. It's required. It is. I know. I know. Well, I think, you know, obviously my mom was, you know, we do have some little mini peepers running around, but I think if you put it in before and you can bake it, it'll be delicious. And then the children will be very quiet and good. I'm just saying. <laughs> this is why I'm not a parent. <laughs> so um, anyway, so that that is, Glenn, my favorite side dish. I love yams. So yeah. how about you, Glenn? What's your favorite side? Oh, you know, I still think the stuffing. I still Stick like a good them. stuffing with, with – uh, I just love stuffing. And, you know, we were talking about it the other day. You never make homemade stuff. You might make the box kind, right? But you you might make stovetop, but you never make good homemade stuffing any time oh, but yeah. Thanksgiving or Christmas. Yes. I don't know why, because it's so good. <laughs> you yes. just never do. Yeah, no, it's so true. You, it's Speaking true. of Paula Deen, I'll tell you what we did the one year. We had a Paula Deen, uh, we had a Paula Deen Thanksgiving, and we went back to her decadent recipes. Oh, yeah. And this was years ago. And we had company coming over, and he, she actually made fried stuffing. Oh, so what you do is you, yes. you take the stuffing, and you cook it in the pan like Norm, not in the turkey, but in the pan. Yep. So it comes out a little solid. There's a little less liquid. Yeah. And it's, yep. you know, it would normally be dry. But then you take the stuffing, and you cut it into chunks. And then you put batter over it and you deep fry you it. Of course you do. Yes. That's got to be amazing. Oh, it I'm was, just saying. Yeah, no calories in that. Ooh. And then, and then also <laughs> she took, and we still do this to this day, it's like candy. You take the, the canned uh, gelatinous kind of cranberry sauce, the kind yep, I like, yep. not, not with any chunks. I like the yeah. smooth kind. <laughs> yeah. And, and you freeze it. You cut it into slices and you put it in the freezer overnight. Really? Then you take and you batter that and deep fry it. No. And Get it out. comes out like candy. It Get really out. does. Are you serious? Yes. Oh, when I come to visit, we have to try that. <laughs> Deep fried cranberry oh, sauce. It's my. really good. Are you serious? That's amazing. <laughs> yes, it was yeah, really we good. do we do a homemade cranberry sauce and then also um the, the one out of the can. We get both. It is awesome. Well, people are are polar on that. They won't they'll eat one or the other. They're oh, no, not. They're going to eat a chunky one, or they're not going to eat a chunky one, right? Yeah. I mean, that's no compromise both. with cranberry sauce. Yeah, it's so true. I go for both. I really do. <clears throat> I like them both. I like cranberries anyway. I like everything cranberry. And then actually, my dad does um, 
a cocktail during the day, you know, when you're hanging out. Usually I feed the horses, so I'm like the last member of the family. Usually Travis has even left me. I'm here by myself and I have to feed everybody, which everybody who owns a barn understands because I, I do try to give my staff. They usually come in in the morning and have everything ready and then I'll come back around and, and uh, go ahead and feed. Um, so I'm always the last one in and uh, my dad always has like cranberry juice and uh, a little sparkling wine or champagne. It's delicious. That and he always good. has it for me. And so, yeah, because I love cranberry and he just, you know, kind of half and half or however, or three quarters and juice. I mean, a uh, little bit of juice on top. But uh, it's fantastic. So that is the drink my dad makes us. And, and we have that as we're kind of hanging out. Uh, I think anything with champagne is good. I, just, I know. Yeah. But a little cranberry juice yeah. is so delicious. So, yep. yeah. But uh, sounds yeah, sounds like you guys are gonna have an amazing uh, Thanksgiving. I, we are gonna have to try that. I'm super excited about <laughs> that deep fried cranberry. Who would I would never have thought to do Paula that? Dean. Well, there you go. You got a side recipe and an alcohol recipe. What more do you need? <laughs> you, yeah, that's basically yams <laughs> and champagne cocktail. There and you go. The tip on the pumpkin pie. <laughs> I'm just right. saying that's pumpkin right. pie. Read the can and do that. And a new <laughs> way to deep fry your stuffing just to, to make it and even better for you. Us. That's right. <laughs> you know, the average Thanksgiving meal, the average person consumes 4,500 calories on Thanksgiving Glenn, Day. Glenn, 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 Glenn. <laughs> but it don't no. count because it's a holiday. Yeah, Clint, don't ruin it. Come on. <laughs> well, Reese and I are going to be back next week. We have a couple of great guests for you as well next week. We are going to have uh, Hillary uh, Moore Hebert from Dressage Today talking about being a mommy. I know. It's, it's great. It's a really cool conversation, and she, I think everyone will enjoy it. And then we have Kathy Robertson, who is the Education Department Manager for the USDF, giving us an update on the USDF convention and the USDF trainers conferences coming up. That'll all be on next week's show. See, we can do it without Philip. Yeah, we can. Yeah, so it's I'll... not as good, but we can do it. <laughs> it's not as technical. <laughs> yeah, right. It's just not as technical. Yeah. No, it's a little weird, but you know what? It's Thanksgiving. Who wants to be Thanksgiving? Exactly, Thanksgiving? exactly. Like... So you can find our show notes and links to today's guests on our website, dressageradio.com. Like us on Facebook, just search dressage radio show follow us on twitter at horse radio my website is maplecrestfarmky.com and my email and remember we love emails uh and facebook shout outs but my email is reese at horse radio network.com and don't forget head on over to horse radio network.com or dressage radio show or dressage radio.com and click on the banner in the middle of the page for the radiothon get your voicemails in or call us live that day on november 30th we want you to be eligible to win all those prizes we'll see you reese all right everybody keep your heels down and your shoulders back and we'll talk to you next week